Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to extend modules to create unique column layouts in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. To showcase how this design technique works, I'm going to walk through the process of building a simple grid layout for featuring products. Then I'll show you how to extend the modules into other columns to create a custom layout design. So right now I'm in my admin dashboard. So the first thing we're going to do is to start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. So we're going to give this page a name and then we're going to click on use the Divi builder and then straight to the visual builder. Usually we start designing using a pre-made layout, but in this case, we are going to build this page from scratch. So I'm going to come over here and select build from scratch. And the column structure we need is this one right here at the bottom. So I'm going to select it. So I'm going to close this for now because we need to start off by adding a background color. Now, if you want to use the same colors and the same settings as I'm using it throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to add a background to the row settings. So I'm going to come over here and click on the row settings icon, add my background color here. Next, I want to go into the design. We're going to go to the uh, sizing. So what we need to do here, we need to make sure equalize column height is set to yes. And then we're going to come over here to our gutter width, select yes. And we are going to set our gutter width to one because by default it's set to three. So this is just to ensure that we don't have any spaces between these columns. Right. So the next thing we need to do now is to add our custom margins and custom paddings. So um, I'm going to come over here to spacing. So for our custom margin, I'm going to add zero both to the top and the bottom. So I need to activate this chain so that when I enter my value, it's going to be applied to the bottom one straight away. Right. So that's my value. And then I'm also going to do the same for the padding like that. Great. So now that I have my values for my custom padding and my custom margin, the next thing we're going to do now is to save settings. So I want to go ahead and do that. Right, so the next stage now is to add a second row. So I'm just going to duplicate this one here because it's going to have the same settings. Um, that means that, you know, the margins and the padding are going to be the same, but the column layout is going to be different. So to change our column layout, I need to come over here and click this icon here to change our column layout. And then we are going to choose this option right here. Next, we're going to um, add the third row. So again, I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, now it's time to add our module. So I'm going to come over here to the top row and add my text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my text module, select it. So I'm going to go now into the settings because as you can see, we can't read our text over here. So we just need to make some adjustments. So the next stage here is to come over here to design text. And we are going to come all the way down here to text color and change this to light because it's on a dark background. Okay, so now that our text is set, the next stage now is to go into spacing because we need to add our custom padding because as you can see here, the text is way too close to the edges. So I'm gonna add custom padding to the top and then left and right. So our value here is going to be two VW. So that's gonna be applied to the top and the bottom. And then I'm also gonna do the same for the left and right. Great, so now we have enough breathing space there. So for now, I'm gonna save. Next, I'm going to add a blurb in this column. So I'm going to click this plus button, search for my blurb. In fact, it's right here. I'm going to select it. So what we're going to do here for this design is we're going to go ahead and delete the text that we have here. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here to my content, click on text, and then I'm just going to get rid of all this. Now over here, um, I mentioned the title. I'm just going to give this something basic. Let's just call this a blurb since it's a blurb. Okay. So that's my title for that. Next, I need to choose my icon. So I need to come over here to image an icon and then I'm going to activate use icon. So this is where you get to choose any icon that you need. So I'm just going to see what I can use here. So I'm going to go here with the speaker as my icon, but you can use any icon that you want. So the next stage now is to add my icon color and then also add my icon size. So I'm going to come over here to design image and icon. So for my color, I'm going to click this little eyedropper tool here and paste my color in here, just like that. Next, as you can see, this icon is way too big. 
we need to customize that. So we're going to come over here to use icon font size, and then we're going to reduce the size all the way down to 50. Next, we're going to come over here to text, and we are going to change our text color from dark to light, because as you can see, we can't really see it here because it's a dark background. Okay, so select light, and now we can see our text, which is great. Next, for our text orientation, this needs to be centered. And then we're going to add some padding to this. So we're going to come all the way here to uh, spacing. So for the padding, we're going to add three VW to the top. And then to the bottom, we are going to add two VW. We're going to save our settings. Now it's time to continue with our design. So in the third column here, I'm going to add an image. So I'm going to click this plus button here. Search for my image module. Select it. And then I'm going to come over here and just click anywhere on this default image. So the image we're going to choose is, let me take a look. So I'm going to go with this one right here. Now, if you want to use the same images as I'm using, you can always go and load one of our pre-made layouts and uh, this will have all these images. Right, so I'm going to click upload an image. So we're not going to do much to this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and save. And then finally, we're going to come over here, click this plus button. So in the last column here, we can add a divider module. So I'm going to select it. And then over here, show divider. Let's set this to no. And we're also going to disable it on the phone. So I'm going to come over here to advanced visibility, disable on phone. Great. So we have everything that we need now. Now it's time to go to row number two. So I'm going to save. So on row number two, we are just going to add a blurb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and then just drag it into position like that. And then we're going to go in and change this icon. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, image and icon. So let's find something different here. So let me just go with this cup. But like I said, it doesn't really matter what icon you choose. This will just depend on the design that you're working on. So for now, I'm going to save. Right, so the next stage we're going to do now is to add a text module onto our second column. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, search for my text module, select it. And then over here, I'm just going to add my text. So all I'm going to add here is product 01. And then I want to highlight this product part and set this to heading 2. Now it's time to go into the design tab. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm just going to start off with uh, making our adjustments to our text. So I'm going to come over here and the text that we are making some changes to is the uh, 01. Okay, so I'm going to start off here with the size. So I'm going to set this to 50. I'm going to set my line height to 1 EM. And for the text orientation, I'm going to set this to the right. And we are going to change the color to white because we can't really read it on this dark background. Great. So now the next stage is to work on heading two. So I'm going to come over here and just mouse over this area and click on this brush tool. So this will take me to the specific settings for heading two. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my text alignment to left. And then we're going to set our color to white as well. And for our line height, I'm going to set it at 3 EM. Now it's time to add our custom padding to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. Then since the exact same value is going to be applied to the top and the bottom, I'm just going to add my two VW here. And then I'm also going to add it to the left and the right. Activate my chain. Great. So now we have enough breathing space here. And then I'm going to save. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to copy this to column four. So I'm just going to hit command C or control C if you're on a PC. And we're going to paste it here on column four. And we're also going to do paste this onto column six. Next, we are also going to add the same text module into column three, five, and six of row three. Great. So now we have all our content in position. So what we need to do next is to add some images in column two of row three. Okay. So I'm going to come over here and add my image. Search for my image module. Select it. And then over here, I'm just going to use an image here from my media library but you can also use any other image. Okay, great. So I have my image in here, so I'm going to save this. Now we need to add our divider module that we created here in column one and add it into these blank spaces. So as you can see right now, it's difficult to see where things are, 
you can go into the wireframe mode. So I'm going to come over here to the bottom, expand settings, click here on this little icon. So this will take us into the wireframe view. Then now we can see we have a divider here. So I'm just going to duplicate this a few times and then just drag this divider into position. So we need one over here on the blank spaces, another one here, and then duplicate this twice, drag this into position here, and then we need one more for this blank space. Great. So once you've done this, all you have to do now is to go into our desktop view. So this will take you back to our visual editor. Now, uh, the other thing that's also happening in my design here is the word product here has been split into two. Now, this is because my row size is quite small. So there's two things that we can do. We can increase the row size or we can reduce the text size. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select all these text modules and make my changes. So I'm going to hold down the command key and select all these like that. And then I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design. So I'm going to highlight, I mean, in fact, I'm going to go into my text here and then I'm going to go straight to the size and reduce it. Okay, great. So now, as you can see, as I make those changes, that's going to be applied to all the instances that were selected. So that's just by using my multi-select. Great. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. Next, I just need to label these because they're all 010101. So let's just go in and let's make this a 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is the first design uh, that we just did without using any negative margins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly duplicate this so that we can have a look at a before and after, after we've done the design. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and now we need to start adding our negative margins. So let's start off with this image here. So I'm going to go into my image settings, click on design, spacing. So what we need here is the margin. So we're going to set this to minus 100%. So now just by adding my negative margin, you can see that this image now has taken this space where we had this divider. So we're going to save this for now. Next, we're going to come over here to row two. So I'm going to click the settings and we are also going to do a negative margin here. So I'm going to click on sizing. In fact, we need to go into spacing. So we are going to apply our negative margin to the left. So I'm going to add my minus so I'm going to save for now. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to copy my module styles. And I'm going to apply them onto this one here, product number three. So I'm going to paste module styles. Do the same here on product five. Great. So all we need to do now is to extend the image in row three. So let's come over here. Click on our settings, design, spacing, and we're going to give this a negative margin to the left of minus 100%. And now you can see the image has filled in the whole space. Okay, so now that we have everything in, in place, the next thing we need to do now is to add different colors to our columns. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm going to start off with the first one here. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my row settings, click on background. So I'm going to start off with the column one backgrounds. So Click this plus button. I'm going to add my color in here and save. Then I'm going to go into the second row. I'm going to click here on my row settings, background. So we're going to start off here with our column one background color. Click this plus button. I'm going to paste my color in here, just like that. I'm going to save that. Go into column four. Next, I'm going to go into column four. Click the plus button, add my color like that. And then finally, I'm going to add my color for column five and six and then save. So now I'm going to go into my third row, click on background. And for this, I'm going to add my color to column three and column six. But of course you can add different colors here. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It just needs to match your designs. So this design here looks great on the desktops. So what we need to do is to add some CSS code. So this looks great also on mobile devices. So what we need to do now is to first of all, save this, and then we're going to go into the page settings, 
and add this bit of CSS code. So if you want to use the same uh, CSS code, again, it's on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Right, so I'm going to come over here to advanced custom CSS, and then this is where I'm going to add the custom CSS. And then we're going to save this. So now that we have the side by side, we can actually see how the negative margins have now helped us design this new layout. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And also, if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please do leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them as soon as possible. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.